July 13, 1900 with the name Juana Ferranda Solar, she came from an average Christian family. Her family and friends called her Juanita, so we will too. Juanita was part of the family of eight. Juanita had three brothers and two sisters. Her dad worked hard, sometimes struggling to make a profit off of his land. Her mother tended to the needs of the six children at home. One of her brothers saw no need in education and pretty much became a bum. Another brother was living a life against the church and focused his attention on science. My brother, he's just lazy. Growing up, she had many friends and was talented in tennis, croquet, track, swimming, singing, and dancing. She played the violin and piano, too. Everyone who met Juanita knew there was something special about her. She could be, and often was, stubborn, proud, and self-centered. Though mostly, she was cheerful, communicative, sympathetic, and very attractive. Juanita was adamant about keeping a journal and writing down her thoughts. This is how we know God chose her at a very young age. Nobody listens to me anyway. Throughout her life, she was very temperamental. She had the tendency to act off of her emotions. Absolutely everything she did was with love and good intentions. Hard to imagine that combo, isn't it? Need a real example of her behavior? Let's look to her journal. One time, Juanita's sister Rebecca grew so upset with Juanita that she hit her. Juanita got so angry her face turned red and she grabbed Rebecca in anger, then stopped. You make me so mad sometimes. Juanita kissed her sister's cheek. Rebecca was confused and shocked, but chased Juanita off, saying, Get away from me! You've given me the kiss of Judith! In 1906, Juanita was six years old. Something inside her sparked. In her journal, she wrote, It was shortly after the 1906 earthquake that Jesus began to claim my heart for himself. She received her confirmation on October 22, 1909, nine years old. Later, on September 11, 1910, Juanita received First Communion and heard God speak to her. She thought nothing of this because she believed God spoke to everyone on their First Communion. In 1913, Juanita was 13. She had appendicitis and was hospitalized. I don't feel so good. When she turned 16, she got a little more aggressive in her prayer life and promised herself to God. She still had that temper though. Once, a nun was passing out candies to everyone. Seeing that she got a small piece, Juanita threw the candy at the nun and refused anymore. such a small piece of candy. Juanita, here, I'll get you a bigger one. No, no! After schooling with the Discalced Carmelite nuns, in April her father finally allowed her to join them and become a nun in 1919. On May 7th, she was given the name Teresa de los Andes. October 14th, she received her habit. She died on April 12, 1920 at 715, three months before her turning 20 and six months short of saying her religious vows. She died of typhus. They did allow her to say her vows early because of her health. What did she really accomplish, you ask? Her complete transformation in the shortest time possible is a true inspiration. Living, believing, and loving. She realized, even though occasionally her temper would flare, that love demonstrates itself in deeds rather than words. Perfection of life consists in drawing close to God. There have been many recorded healing miracles where her remains rest in Los Andes, and to this day is a popular pilgrimage. She is the patron saint of disease, illness, and young children. Mm -hmm.